Professor Dave and Chegg here. We know of aldehydes and ketones as carbonyl containing functional groups with either one or two R groups respectively. But how can they be prepared? Let's go through a few common methods now. One of the easiest ways to produce aldehydes is through the oxidation of primary alcohols. This can be done with reagents like PCC, and we simply gain an additional carbon-oxygen bond, resulting in an aldehyde. It is also the case that aldehydes can be produced by reduction of a carboxylic acid, but certain special reagents are required. One such reagent is diisobutyl aluminum hydride, or dibol H. This is typically carried out at cold temperatures in toluene. Ketones can be produced under similar conditions as aldehydes. For example, they can be produced from secondary alcohols by common oxidizing agents, again like PCC, but also stronger oxidizing agents like CrO3, since carbon-carbon bonds will typically not be broken by such oxidations. Another interesting method for producing ketones is ozonolysis. If ozonolysis is performed on a heavily substituted alkene, the carbon-carbon double bond will be cleaved, and each carbon that was participating in the double bond will now be a carbonyl carbon. So it is the case that two different ketones can be produced in such a reaction. A third approach for producing ketones is friedel crafts acylation. When benzene reacts with an acyl chloride in the presence of aluminum trichloride, we end up with an aromatic ketone. Ketones can also be produced from carboxylic acids, often through multiple steps. For example, if a carboxylic acid is converted into an acyl chloride, then reaction with a lithium diorganic copper reagent can result in replacement of the chlorine atom with an alkyl group, thus producing a ketone. There are many other ways to produce aldehydes and ketones. Certainly oxidation and reduction are common ways, but as we saw, there are many other, more clever synthetic strategies that are available. Professor Dave Fritschek, see you next time.